record. Was there an option for that? No, no. Oh, <laughs> she scared me. All right, so let's uh, continue talking about how we might get data into the controller that we can display on the view. A calendar is a perfect application for that because typically we want to scroll forward and backward on our calendar page. You've seen them all where you have a calendar and you have a previous button and a next button. And you want to go forward a month and back a month. So let's, uh, let's start playing with some of the time things and get the current time so I can display in the view. Where would I do that code? Uh, all right, so let's go to my, my page controller and look at my calendar method. This is where I might be able to add some data. So I can say current time. How do I get the current time in Ruby? Time.now. Time.now. All right, so there's the current time. And it sets it in what type of variable? What is this variable called? It's an instance variable. The at sign makes it an instance variable. Because it's an instance variable, it is then available for the view to see. The scope of the variable becomes available in the view, which is very key, right? We want to be able to see that. So let's go to our view and display that variable now. Using RubyMine, let's click, and this just jumps us right to it. Bada boom, bada bing. And let's, uh, let's take away, well, let's just do it at the top. So how would I display that variable in embedded Ruby? All right. So just referencing the variable is like printing it to the screen because this equal sign says basically puts this out to the HTML stream. All right, so let's save that. Open up our calendar. Let's go down to smaller count. So now this is the view. This is the time that was displayed. And that's in the standard UTC time code format. Uh, year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds. The time zone we're in, we're in uh, GMT minus seven. And uh, I don't remember what the 15 is. <laughs> oh, that's part of my countdown. There you go. See? Can you go back to the page controller so I can see how you wrote this? All right. So all I did was I called the Ruby method time.now, and I stored that data in the current time variable. Yes. What would happen if you stored like current time in your like as this variable count is? Like how would it bug out with your error? You mean if I did it up here? No, on the other page on the the actual people. On my view? Yeah, put current the instance current time just right there for example. Oh, all right. Well let's see. You like to play around, don't you? Let's see what we get. All right, so it came up with an error. It's trying to convert current time into an integer or a fixed num, and it can't do that. So a time a time object doesn't have a, a right way to do, to go into that. I'd have to call two i on it, which is I don't want to do because it's going to be a, a a million digit or billion digit. I don't want to print that much. So good question. All right, so now I can set variables in my controller. I can receive them in my viewer. I can do all kinds of stuff with that. How would I start to, uh, to create a calendar then? All right, how do I create? I'm only going to go through the first row of the calendar to help you with that. I need a table. Uh, calendar is perfect for ta tabular data. So I'm going to start my table, and I'm going to uh, violate some rules because this is easier for me than to try and style it right now. I leave that for you guys. I need a table. I'm going to put a border of one on it so I can see the table even if uh, there's nothing in a space. All right. So how many 
cells do I need to display the first week? Seven. How many days are there? There's seven. So I'm going to print out a table row, and then I need seven uh, cells, right? So I could do that by just saying something like this, seven dot times do. And I could print out the value of a table cell and put a NBSP in it. Why do you think I do that? Yep, it's a non-baking space, but why do I put it in there? Anybody? I'm not sure anymore. I'm so used to doing it because table cells collapse if there's nothing in it. So putting anything in there, this is a non-breaking invisible character, and it leaves the cell open. So let's, uh, let's see what I get when I reload the page now. All right, I got this nice little seven boxes across. And let's, let's just try it, just take it out for my own benefit here and see what happens. It collapses down to nothing. I can't see it. So you see that? So that's why I do it. I knew there was a reason. Yep. But now, now and, and I leave that to you, what, I'm, what I now need to do is figure out where the first day of the month starts. Okay, how do you think we would do that? Because I need to put, pardon me, look at the calendar, okay? Um, what does a computer know uh, that I don't? It, it already knows some information for me. Right, it knows that, that the calendar. So let's look at a calendar. The first actually starts on a Saturday for October. So this current time is October. So let's go look at the Ruby uh, documentation. And look up some time methods and see if we can figure out how to determine when the first day of the week, what day of the week the first of the month stand, lands on. All right, so we're going to go to the core reference. Let's put this over here so we can record it. Going to the core reference, ruby.stock.org. Oh, this is different. They changed it. So I want to look at the time method. Wow, they changed it a lot. Look at that. So here is the time method, and these are the met I mean the time what is this called? A time class. Inside of it are methods that are associated with that, all kinds of things I can do with that. Um, like there's a Monday question mark. So if I look at that, I can say Monday returns true or false if a particular time is a Monday. So it could figure out what day of the week it is. But that's, that's bad. I would have to run that seven times for each day of the week to figure out, is, is this the first, is this the first, is this the first? That doesn't make sense. All right, so what else, what else do you think I can do with some of these methods? How would I figure out the first of the month? So there's a method called uh, make time, at least there used to be. Wow. You gotta be kidding me. There it is. Make time. So make time lets me create a time based on uh, some variables that I'm gonna pass into it. So I can say, where is, it's not, I guess that's it here. I can pass in the year and get back a time object for that year. I can pass in a year and a month or pass in a year, month, and a day. What do you think I would have to pass in to get the first of the month? Year, month, day. So I can call the make time method with the year, month, and day. 
and get a time object based on that. So let's let's do that first and play with uh, uh, play with this a little bit in my controller. I can say day one equals time dot uh, make time, and I'm going to pass it the year 2011, the month which is um, it's off by one. It always confuses me. Uh, I believe that zero, zero is it's zero based. I believe just like JavaScript. So uh, zero is January. October would be uh, nine. And then day one would be one. <laughs> That's actually one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They just, they, I'm pretty sure that's it. So let's say day one. Now, what are some other nice methods I can use? There are some methods in the time class that tell me um, the day of the week. So it's called W day. And W day gives me, given a time object that I created that now is October 1st, I can call W day on it and it returns the number of the day of the week that I'm on. All right? So I can do all of this in one, in one line. And day one should now have the value of what? Now, the days of the week are zero based, starting with Sunday. So Saturday would be six. So let's see if that's the case. Let's print off, uh, let's put a break tag here, print off the value of day one, and then put another break tag in, because I like them. And reload on my page. And I get seven. Why do I get seven? Four. Oh, no, here's four. Uh, I think I might not have this right. Um, so let's do it. Let's do it differently. This is a good debugging. I'm going to set my day one to just be the date, uh, the time object. And then in my, in my uh, embedded Ruby, I'm going to print the date and then the day of the week. So again, this is just a date object. I can call W day on it. And let's see what I get here. I think my date is wrong. So it's not zero based. See, I, JavaScript is, Ruby's not. I get confused all the time. So this actually should be 10. All right. So now I'm getting six here for the day of the week. I'm getting October 1st for my day one. Day one dot W day gives me six, which is the sixth day of the week. So the first day of October lands on the sixth day of the week out of a seven day series, right? So how can I print that in the last cell? Now you have to come up with some mathematics to try to figure out how, because I have to print some blank cells and then I have to print the one. So what kind of math can I do for that? So I'm going to do one. So, so now instead of seven, we figured out the algorithm. Sorry for those that didn't get to see that on the board. Uh, we need to do this how many times? We need to spit out a space. Remember from our algorithm? I no, for the spaces, I need to spit out how many spaces? No. It's just W day. So day one dot W day dot times. That will give me six spaces for October. All right, so that gives me the spaces. Then I need to have another loop that prints out the numbers. 
So I'm going to have, maybe I'm going to set a variable called uh, day, and I'm going to set that to be 1. Then I need a, a loop to do how many times am I going to loop through to print out the rest of the seven days. This is where I do the 7 minus um, day 1 dot w day dot times do. How about that? Now, there's lots of ways to do this. You can do it your own way if you want. I don't care. This is just one way to do it. Um, this gives me now 7 minus 6 times. I'm going to print out what? Not a space. I printed my spaces up here. I'm going to print the numbers. So inside of my here, I need to have the cells surrounded by the number, which is represented by what variable? Day. So in here, I want to output the value of day. And I also need to increment my day, right? Then I end, print off my end of row, finish my table off, and bada boom, bada bang, I should have a one, which I do, in the end of my cell here. Isn't that great? So I've got, I've got six spaces and my one here. Now let's try it with some other dates. So if I, where, where am I setting my day one? in my method, in my action, in my controller. So let's, let's make this uh, November instead and see what happens. So November, and let's verify it, November, if I go forward a month, November starts on a Tuesday. So my W day is going to be 0, 1, 2. I'm going to print two spaces and five numbers. Bazamo, look at that. Is that great? Isn't that simple? <laughs> the hardest part is coming up with the algorithm. The rest of it is pretty straightforward Ruby to figure out how to do that. All right, any questions on that so far? Lots more to, to go through, so. All right, we're going to run out of time today, uh, but the next thing we need to do, I'm not going to continue on with the next rows, but I'm going to show you how we can might change the forward and next buttons and how we might pass in data using the query string to represent the month that I want to display. Because by default, if I go to the calendar, I want to show what month. The current month, whatever day of the week it is, I want to show October if I'm in October. I want to show April if I'm in April. Then I would show links to go forward and backward uh, so I can go back and forward a month, right? But by default, typically, calendars show the current month that you're on and perhaps even shade the, the, the color, yeah, make it bold, something, the current day of the week. That's even just some more calculations and some styles that you'd add. Uh, so the styling is going to be, this is your next week's assignment, by the way. So all the styling is left up to you, uh, but you have to have forward and backward buttons, uh, etc. So I'm going to stop this.